So, as I was sitting here trying to write a song, I was reminded of two things. First, um, it was a conversation I had in a course about, I think, criminal psychology in what I suppose you would call a high school. And essentially, let me see, yeah, it's the pickup. Essentially, what, what the teacher was talking about was how when you have like a distinctive name that can really sort of shoot you in the back. Because there was a f sort of famous criminal case here in Iceland about a man that was killed. And one of the parties involved had a very sort of distinct last name. Like there were six or seven people or ten people that were part of this trial. And the only guy that people could remember, uh, I won't repeat his last name just out of respect for being dogged for two decades, but this guy basically had a sort of interesting last name so people would remember. In the same way, I bring this up because I was reminiscing about the time when I was 13 or 14 messing around on Omegle, that beautiful website full of human misery. And I ended up having a conversation about like the craft of writing for, cause for like two years, I thought I was going to write short stories and be Stephen King and, you know, as you do. And I remember I had a conversation with a writer that was published actually. And I always remember this interaction because I like, we were talking and then he left abruptly because I was 14 and I probably said something stupid like 14 year olds say, especially this 14 year old. And then I caught him again and I realized it was him. And then, you know, he called me an asshole or an idiot or some, some pejorative and then left again. And I always remember this guy because his name was Tom Quackenbash or something like that. And I vaguely remember Googling him and finding his book and leaving a hateful review at the age of 16. No. So yeah, that's the saga of Tom Quackenbash. Actually, actually, a small sort of side note, which I might actually add accompaniment to. So for about four or five years, I held out a YouTube channel. It's the same one I still use, but I don't upload anymore. And I was doing movie reviews. Speaking like this, in like hushed tones, and like, my voice was up here because my, you know, still haven't gone, technically gone through puberty, I think. And I remember I was really into this guy called Rambo Rap for Life. He picked up a hater called Michael Frost Darko. And I remember Michael Frost Darko because he was really getting under Rambo Raff's skin. Because Rambo Raff basically, for like two seconds, Rambo Raff was famous for like losing his shit over movies. You know, as you do on YouTube, or did on YouTube in 2012. And basically, and basically, Michael Frost Darko was like trying to out Rambo Raff as a loser who lived with his mom. And God, they got into a sort of interesting conversation and I tried to chime in. And as is the way with like a different language that you don't speak very well, like English is my second language, right? So at the time I was trying to like join a conversation in the same way I would have as I was speaking Icelandic. And I remember like I said something and he construed it as hate. Mind you, I'm 16 or 15 when this goes down, right? And I say something, spell it terribly because I'm horribly dyslexic, right? And then I remember this dude, this fucking dude, 
proceeds to go to my silly little YouTube channel where I talk about Dolph Lundgren movies and dislike every one of my videos and all this fucking shit. I remember there was a Dolph Lundgren movie, like, for reference, and I think I'll not put this on my Instagram, I'll put it up on my YouTube channel just for a laugh. Um, <laughs> there was a Dolph Lundgren movie that I did a review for, and when I say review, I talked about my favorite scenes for nine minutes or whatever, <laughs> and I remember it so vividly, it was... When in the Chamber, because Cuba Gooding Jr. was in it, and Cuba, Cuba Gooding Jr. was a pseudo-famous person still, you know? Anybody remember him? And I remember some guy commented on my video. I was like, this is a terrible review. All you do is talk about your favorite scenes. There's no substance here. And Michael Frost Darko responded saying like, <laughs> You know, my reviews are way better. And I remember this Frost Darko character because he always talked about, like, how he was busting his ass doing, like, review after review. And, like, I think he was going to try and store them and then upload them. And I remember, like, he used his grainy-ass fucking webcam. And it was all very strange. It was all very, very strange. Yeah, I spent too long about on this reflection. I might actually call it vlog. Vlog with guitar. Let's let's do a thing. Do you think I'll get copyright claimed if I play? Or no, I'll probably get copyright claimed if I play this. <laughs> time making YouTube videos and I remember doing it just because you know it was a hobby it was a hobby before I started doing this crap <laughs> yeah it's a weird thing to think about like on this YouTube channel since I've decided now made a decision that this is going up on my YouTube where I haven't actually uploaded like a YouTuber video in a long time. Not that I ever got any views. So I'll tell two more stories just for my historian brain because I think it's funny. And maybe I'll play some guitar and then I'll stop talking like a weirdo person in the washroom of my house. <laughs> but my parents' house where I live. But now, not enough about that. <laughs> so essentially, I remember I had an I got an iPad for my confirmation present for my family. It was an iPad 2. Very nice. I still have it. And yeah, I lost the password for my like iCloud account or whatever the hell you call it. So can't really update it anymore. And I sort of gave up on it anyway. <laughs> so I basically just use it for an amp simulator and I dick along to YouTube videos, dick around playing along to YouTube videos, is what I was going to say on guitar. The only app in there that actually works is the uh, Jam Up Pro that my dad got me. It was pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Like an amp sim type thing. Good tones. And that was what I used to record my videos, and I remember for some odd reason, I don't remember how I managed to do it, but I blew out the microphone on the iPad. It might have been when I dropped it or something, or just played loud guitar around it or something. So essentially, that stopped working, and then I, that really was the real reason, I think, that the, my silly little YouTube videos petered out, because I wasn't doing it to, like, get famous, you know? Look at me. I'm 
I'm not a guy that gets famous. I just was doing it because it was fun. And I talk about movies because that's really all I did for a long time was, you know, try to drown my sorrows in blood, sweat, and boobies and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone movies and the occasional, like, cool flick. Like, I vaguely remember watching Brian De Palma's Blowout at the age of, like, 13 or 14. And that was pretty cool. Hitchcock movies and stuff like that. I'm no film connoisseur by any stretch of the imagination, but, like, it was, it was interesting, right? It was interesting to, like, grow up and watch movies and, like, just to continue... Going off on tangents, I remember there was, like, I remember the R rating being scary because, like, as a kid, there are certain things you're not supposed to watch. And my sort of first encounters with that that still live with me to this day of being 25 on the floor of the washroom in my parents' house <laughs> are thing are most... Like, most clearly are seeing, like, the ending fight scene from a Steven Seagal movie called Marked for Death. And we had that movie on VHS. That's how long ago it was, and it shows you how old I am, I suppose. I remember I'd sneak to put it in, and it was at the ending. And I just remember, because it's Steven Seagal fighting a Jamaican guy with like a machete or something. And it was really bloody. And like, I have glimpses in my head of the movie, of like nude scenes and other silly shit that you find in movies like that. And that lives with me. I probably saw that shit when I was like 11 or something, you know? Cause you seek out the things you're not allowed to see. And the other thing that sort of lives with me still is there's a movie which in retrospect isn't like the greatest movie of all time, Swordfish, which is, uh, I think, stars Hugh Jackman, John Travolta, and Halle Berry. And it's this sort of crime, cyber, pseudo cyber hacker thriller where Hugh Jackman plays a hacker who's, you know, gets into a lot of trouble. And I remember Swordfish, and really the thing that Swordfish, I think, will live on in the memory of most people. Four is the fact that there is a Harley, ha, uh, 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 Halle Berry nude scene in there for which she got paid an extra 500 grand, mind you, so smart lady. And the thing that li lives with me about Swordfish is like, because like, I'm assuming my dad must have bought it on DVD at some market or something. And it was always, like, in the drawer by the TV. Because, like, I had my movies and they were in my room. And then this movie was always in the drawer by the TV because they bought it. And I remember putting it in, watching it. And there's this scene where John Travolta has a bunch of people hooked up to, like, bombs. Like, ball-bearing bombs of some kind. And it ex and explodes. Yeah. That's the sort of shit that'll live with you. All right, I'm gonna try to fish out a few licks, and then we're gonna call it. And then I'm not gonna upload a serious YouTube or YouTube video for, I don't know, how does another 10 years sound?
Nice and robot signing off. <laughs>